The Retroid Pocket 2 was released in late 2020. The Retroid Pocket 2 Plus released in early 2022 with some substantial improvements. The Retroid Pocket 3 released in August of 2022. It looked and felt nicer, had a slight spec bump, but was more or less the same thing. It was also ripe with manufacturing issues. The Retroid Pocket 3 Plus came out in late November of 2022, and it's the same damn thing. Hey, look at that button down there. Make sure you're subscribed, would you? That's three devices released this year that are more or less the same thing. Why? Given the timeline, it's clear that COVID set things back, but that doesn't mean release your whole back catalog of stuff. It's rumored that the Retroid Pocket 3 was sitting in a warehouse somewhere for years, had a bunch of manufacturing issues. They knew that it had manufacturing issues. They decided to release it anyway, and then just three months later, released a new model to fix those manufacturing issues. That's this, the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. The Plus stands for It's Fixed Now. It's a slap in the face to fans of the original Retroid. People like me, who were excited about the Retroid Pocket 3 and got it on day one. And I'm one of the guys who fell victim to those manufacturing issues. Had we have just waited a few weeks, we would have gotten the superior product. I mean, I got it anyway. Do I look happy about it? Okay, so I said it's the same, but there are actually some differences. I mean, if you own a Retroid Pocket 3 already, it's totally not worth it. But if you're trying to get into portable emulation, it pains me to say this, but this might still be the best bet. Just look out for that buyer's remorse coming around the corner any minute now. This video is sponsored by Surfshark. When I thought up of Surfshark Dog, I was just throwing ideas on the wall. I had no idea it was gonna be as big of a hit as it was. Yeah, I know, right? Now I'm more popular than you. Shut up. Don't say that. Surfshark is paying us and, and, and they do one a month and I, I'm running out of ideas. So that's where you came in. Wait, you get money for this? I haven't gotten anything. No, you can't, you can't spend money or dog. People just like hearing you talk about Surfshark more than they like hear me talking about it. And I think you got it down by now, right? I mean. Everybody knows that VPNs can help change your location so that you can access content that might otherwise be blocked in your country. They can also help you encrypt your data so that nobody in your network can see what you're doing, not even your ISP. I got more offers coming in, you know. Next week, I'm gonna be an ogre in Raid Shadow Legends. Who's giving you these deals? Your manager. Paul? You know Paul? Surfshark can also help you send and receive files securely and protect your important data. Would you shut up and get back to how you know my manager? Oh, we hit it off at his wedding. It was great. He got married? I wasn't invited? If you want to give Surfshark a try, all I have to do is click the link in the description below and use the code WOLFDEN for a whole 83% off plus three months for free. That's a whole lot of deals. Hong Kong. Oh, that's my ride. I got to go to the Shorty Awards with Timothy Chalamet and Bing Bronson. Who's <laughs> Bing? How do you know these people? You're with me all day. Paul's wedding, idiot. I told you already. Retroid did throw us a bone. If you were an early adopter of the Retroid Pocket 3, they would give you a coupon for $25 off the 3 Plus. No, it doesn't help, it still stings. Here is a list of differences between the Retroid Pocket 3 and the 3 Plus. On paper, it looks like a substantial improvement. A slight graphical bump and one gigabyte of RAM over the top Pocket 3 model, which is the one that I had. It also has way more internal storage at 128 gigabytes instead of just 32 gigabytes, which I didn't see at first, and that's good to know. I am gonna transfer all of my games from the micro SD card over to the internal storage, and I'll use that card for something else. It also has a slight improvement to battery life, which is already pretty good on the original. The old Pocket 3 is still selling for full retail at $119 or $129 for the extra gigabyte of RAM, the one that I have. And the Pocket 3 Plus is selling for $149. It was released on October 18th of this year, but mine took an awfully long time to get to me. And if you go to their website right now, it's listed as a pre-order. So I guess they're having a hard time keeping up with demand. They released a statement saying that they were heavily impacted by the recent COVID outbreaks in China. They were forced to shut down their factories, so it might take a little while for supply to catch up to demand. This is a completely separate issue from when they stockpiled thousands of Retroid Pocket 3s, released them anyway with faulty hardware, and then just released a new version just three months later. That's a different issue, two separate, two separate things. I really liked my Retroid Pocket 3. 
I don't want to get too into the weeds with the review on the 3 Plus because I think there's a lot of similarities. I think they're both more or less the same. So if you want to see more details, I suggest you just go watch that video. In this video, I'm going to talk about the differences between the two devices and why this one is more money or, or better. Also in that original video, I slapped a pretty big asterisk over the whole review because of those manufacturing issues. I tried to highlight them, but it was very hard to comment on those when my initial experience had been so good. Well, about three weeks after that review, my home button stopped working. It was stuck in the pressed position, which made the device get stuck in a boot loop. It was unusable. Whatever. It happens. I figured this would be a good time to test Retroid's customer service. Well, that customer service is absolute dog shit. So yeah, I'm now pissed about those manufacturing issues. So I guess the first difference between the two devices is that this one shouldn't have any manufacturing issues, although it's way too early to tell. If you remember, the original Pocket 3 came with extra buttons that were conductive rubber instead of pre-installed dome switches. The hell? Some sites erroneously reported that the Pocket 3 had rubber switches pre-installed. Mine didn't. It had dome switches pre-installed. And I'm pretty sure they all did. I don't really understand what happened here. I mean, I have an idea, but I don't understand what their thought process was. In the video by Taki Udon, where he talks about how he worked closely with Retroid on QA testing these devices, he says that Retroid realized that most people preferred the conductive rubber switches over the dome switches. So instead of fixing their massive stockpile of Retroid Pocket 3s and putting the rubber switches in there, they just released it with dome switches and threw the conductive rubbers in the box and said, here you go, you guys deal with it, you'll figure it out. I have an even worse theory. What if they realized that the boards that the dome switches were on were faulty? So they threw replacements in the box and said, you guys deal with it. Just like mine failed. Like I had to replace mine. I ended up opening mine up and replacing the button board for this video so I can do a proper comparison. It wasn't hard to do, but I shouldn't have had to do it. You know? Like imagine if Nintendo realized that the Joy-Cons drift and they were just like, here's new thumbsticks in the box. You'll figure it out. You guys know what you're doing. The Retro Pocket 3 Plus has the conductive rubber buttons built in. I don't know why everybody likes these. I like clicky switches. So I already liked the dome switches from the original. The conductive rubber switches on the new one feel thicker. The dome switches feel like a Joy-Con, where the conductive rubber feels more like an Xbox controller, if that makes sense. They're both fine. I wouldn't make this a determining factor when choosing one over the other. It's just a very strange thing to take out unless they were only taken out because they knew they were faulty, which I think they might have been. Here in America, that would be grounds for a recall. Like imagine if Nintendo released the Switch with a whole bunch of faulty Joy-Cons. Anyway, just like the original, when you first boot it up, it goes through the regular Android setup process, but it also has you pick from a list of programs to auto download. Most of these are emulators and they added some good ones to the Pocket 3 Plus, like the enhanced version of Citra and Dolphin. I did have to download my own version of Dolphin, MMJR, but I appreciate the attempt. There's a bunch of free or fan games on here too. Spelunky Classic, Unsiv, Minecraft, Java, it can also download Poke MMO for you. Just Google what that is. It's pretty cool that it's here. Of course, you can also just download those for yourself after the fact. I like the way this is set up and the default apps seem to have been improved over the previous Retroid, even if just slightly. After this, you have the option to use the Retroid launcher, which is a fantastic launcher. I ended up installing Daiji Show on here. That's a new emulation front end that people have been using with Android, and I just wanted to check it out. It's really cool, but honestly, I think I like the Retroid launcher better. It's just clearer and simpler. Daiji Show is a little better at selecting the right emulators by default, and a little easier to manipulate if you want to, but I didn't really need to do much here. If you're getting one of these, there's nothing wrong with just sticking with the regular Retroid launcher. It's one of the things that they got right about this. And one of the things that makes it a great option for people who just wanna play games 
and don't wanna mess around with their device too much. One of the biggest quirks with front ends like this is that the individual emulators might get a little weird upon first boot. So you might wanna open each emulator outside of the front end and configure your controls and whatever else you wanna configure before using the front end to launch your individual ROMs. It also helps to set the controller to Xbox mode in the settings so that it's easier for emulators to map the buttons correctly by default. Daiji Show also has an option to swap A and B so it'll work a bit better. And the Retroid launcher just knows what button is what by default. Like I said before, I ended up needing to download Dolphin MMJR because the pre-installed one wasn't working correctly. And honestly, GameCube games are a bit disappointing here. It plays way better than it did on the previous Retroid, but not good enough for me to recommend buying one of these strictly for its GameCube functionality. Sure, you could play GameCube games on here, but I wouldn't be happy if I bought this just for GameCube. The performance is fine in some games and pretty subpar in others, which means upgrading from the Retroid Pocket 3 to the 3 Plus doesn't really sound worth it. GameCube still isn't that great, and PS2 just straight up doesn't work at all. I think Stryker is uh, a little drunk. Also I will say that 3DS is a significant improvement over the Retroid Pocket 3. For some reason, Citra wasn't going to use .cia files. I had to use .3DS files. But they ran pretty good. You could probably play Pokemon games and be pretty fine with it. If you want to play something that requires reaction time, it might be a similar situation to GameCube. It might not be that great of an experience. I'd say you're really not getting that much more out of this than you would have on your regular Retroid Pocket 3. However, some of the issues that I had with emulation quality, games that you were already able to play on the Retroid Pocket 3, but like were a little weird, have been addressed here. For example, Dreamcast seems to run a lot more smoothly. No noticeable frame dips and no weird shadow textures anymore. I was able to play N64 perfectly fine on the last Retroid, but this one has less frame dips for sure and shorter loading times in the more power hungry games like Perfect Dark. DS performed fine. I would have liked some better performance and I'm sure it would be better if I shilled the extra $5 for Drastic. I have bought that before. I don't know why it's acting like I don't own it. Otherwise, it's more or less the same. And with that comes the same issues. Because the volume buttons are on the side of the device, I do find myself accidentally raising or lowering the volume during intense play sessions because it's kind of impossible to hold it without touching those buttons. The home button is less of an issue because by default it requires two presses to activate, so it's harder to hit by accident. The price point of the Retroid Pocket 3 made it a no-brainer for people who wanted to get into portable emulation. It was cheap, the screen is gorgeous, it was super comfortable to hold and play, it was very easy to set up, and the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus is good for all of the same reasons. If you want good emulation quality with GameCube games, or even 3DS games, or even PlayStation 2 games, I still recommend the Ein Odin. The one that I had was $300, but even the $220 light model would probably be fine if you can get your hands on any of those. But that's a whole lot more money than the Retroid Pocket 3 or even the 3 Plus. So if you can withstand having some emulation issues in GameCube, and if you can ignore PlayStation 2 entirely, then the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus still might be a good option. The price point and the incredibly easy setup thanks to the Retroid launcher makes it very easy to recommend to people. But, and you knew there was a but coming, how could I recommend this to people when my original Retroid Pocket 3 died, they knew that it had faulty hardware, they expect you to fix it, and then they release a fix in the form of a new model just three months later. How could I trust a company like that? And how could I throw that burden onto you people? It's incredibly frustrating. And this is a weird sort of market that we're in. And we're seeing a lot of companies swooping in and taking advantage of us fanatics, releasing purposely nerfed products and then just spamming those incremental updates. 
it's really preventing this industry from being a lot bigger than it could be. Well, that and the fact that you have to download and install illegal games on here, that is also probably preventing this from being mainstream. This thing shouldn't exist. They should have gotten it right the first time. It pains me to say that this is a great portable emulator because I don't trust the company. And I don't know what this will be like a few weeks from now. Will there be another one announced tomorrow? Will it still even work in a few weeks? I wish I could tell you. Just wish us luck to anyone who took the dive and bought one of these things. Anyway, what do you guys think about the Retroid series of products, specifically the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus that just came out? Does it look interesting to you? Is it worth the risk of buying? Or do you think I'm really over dramatizing this? Because I did end up fixing mine anyway. Just took a lot of screws. But like, we didn't sign up to buy a kit. Like, that's different. They do sell upgrade kits. I thought I was buying a complete product. That's totally not what I purchased. Anyway, leave it in the comments below, at me on Twitter, any and all of this other social media garbage. I stream on twitch.tv slash wolfden a lot, usually at night. And a lot of the times I'm playing around with stuff like this. I played around with this on Twitch and you can watch me futz around with it and we can talk about it there too. Thank you Surfshark for helping sponsor this video. And of course, the most important thing that you can do to help support this channel is just subscribe. Make sure you're subscribed. Not other people think they're subscribed when they're not. And share this video with a friend. A friend who maybe might be interested in getting into portable emulation. Would this scare them away from it? Again, it's hard to recommend. Thank you guys very much. Have yourself a good week.